Hey there, in this video, you're gonna get a chance to learn how to create a content plan that actually works, so stay tuned. Hey there, Mel Abraham here from Thoughtpreneur Academy, and in this video, you're gonna learn how to create a content plan that actually works. There's actually three steps to this process, and the first step is actually knowing what to avoid. Um, where the problems are and one of the challenges with creating content is what I see out there is a lot of people don't create content with any consistency and so we need to create content in a consistent way which can be burdensome unless you have a system we'll talk about the system in step three but right now understanding that we need to create consistent content the other side of it is this if I'm going to create content the content needs to be created with a purpose. There needs to be a strategy to it. It's not about just putting stuff out there that you think is fun stuff or, or what have you. It's got to drive your positioning. It's got to drive your solutions. It needs to attract your market. There needs to be a strategy behind every piece of content that's being created. When there isn't, we end up being stressed. You're thinking about, oh, it's, I gotta create some content and you get stressed out you get freaked out, you get, I mean, I've done it. I know that it's happened with me many, many times until I created a system that allowed me to just create content. We'll talk about batching content also. And at the same time is making sure that the content is furthering how you wanna be seen in the industry, what you stand for, your values, your beliefs, and your positioning in an industry where, where that flies. And what I mean by positioning is this, is that we can do marketing, which is fine, but positioning creates a situation where you're known for what you know. And so that content that you're putting out there is to create the notoriety and the following where people know what you know and what you know makes a difference. That's how I see positioning. So one of the things to think about is in that content process, how do you start and build a process where it makes it easy to create content in the future? That's step two which is about being efficient in your content creation. Like I said, creating content on a daily basis, a weekly basis, a monthly basis can be burdensome. I'm not gonna lie. You know, you're having to write 500 word blog posts or articles and then you wanna do posts and you wanna do YouTubes and you wanna do lives and you wanna do speeches. That's a lot of work if you don't have a process to make it happen. So the, the first thing to understand is how do I batch the creation of my content. In other words, is there a way for me to just block out a day? For instance, in my case, I'll block out a day a month and build out all of my content for the next six weeks. So that means that my content creation days are once about every six, seven weeks, which doesn't feel as burdensome. And I block it out on the calendar. I know that that's the day that I'm gonna create the content. I'm gonna create all the content in that one day or that day and a half in some cases, and I put it out to the team and the team is the one that distributes the content uh, for me. So the first is, is to figure out how do you batch it. The second is that if you use content themes, it actually allows you to do structuring of your content a lot easier. Here's what I mean by that. If I look at just months, you've got 12 months in a year. If I look at each month and say there's a theme for each month, it gives me some direction of the content that I'm gonna create. For instance, as, a, as someone that wants to be a thought leader, as someone that wants to create legacy with what you know and have an impact, one of the things that we need to do is create traffic, to have people coming to our site. So maybe the weekly content that I'm gonna do in, say, February, is all on traffic building that how, how do we get traffic sources, what are the, how do we know that the traffic sources are correct, but can you see for a moment that when we theme things, it makes it easier to direct what content we're gonna create each and every month. So one of the things that I do is at the end of each year, we create a content calendar and every month has a specific theme to make that happen. So it makes it easier for me, it narrows my thinking so I'm not just looking at this whole buffet of things I could talk about, but it's themed. The other thing that, that I look at is I build my content to elevate my frameworks. So if you look at, at one of my core frameworks, it talks about distinction, it talks about reach, it talks about 
uh, prescription. And this is how do you become an influencer, a true thought leader and, and own your space? Well, I can actually theme around that and say, say I'm gonna elevate the framework. So today's, today's content piece will be about distinction. And in that process, you elevate your frameworks and keep your frameworks in, in the public eye, in your audience's eye. And then the last piece of this efficiency is to delegate the non-creative stuff. And bottom line is that for me, I, I, my money's made at the delivery, creating relationships and creating the content. It's not made in the editing process. It's not made in the publishing process. It's not made in the, in, in the uploading process. That is actually a monumental waste of valuable time. And there's other folks that it is more valuable to have them do it. So uh, I'm gonna take all the non-creative functions and I'm gonna delegate those out. And that's how you'll make content creation much more efficient, which leads us into step number three, which is creating content with purpose. So here's the steps that, that I'll, I'll go through is one, is I gotta decide first, what are the deliverables? In other words, what kind of content am I gonna create? Am I gonna do blogs weekly? Am I gonna do them daily? I mean, there's some people that do podcasts on a daily basis. John Lee Dumas does a daily bro uh, podcast. So, so if I look at this, you know, what are the deliveries? Blogs, podcasts, am I doing Facebook Lives? Am I writing articles? Maybe I'm a contributor at, to the Huffington Post or Forbes or, or uh, Harvard Business Review. What are the actual deliver deliverables? We need to define what the content that we want to create is first before we're gonna ever create it. So define the deliverables. The second step is to define the monthly themes. And I would try to make it framework based. If I can make it framework based, it allows me again to elevate the framework. So that next piece is to look at the calendar and say what is each theme each month or each week, however you wanna do it, I'm gonna say that you ought to do it at least monthly, maybe quarterly. I wouldn't do it weekly. So it'll make it easier if I'm doing quarterly or monthly themes to know exactly what that content is that we're, go we're gonna work from. Interesting themes that you can use are values-based themes. So not only values, but value-based. So a theme around what are your beliefs? What are your values? What do you stand for? And, and encouraging your audience to connect with you on that level, but also share their values, to share their beliefs, to share what they're feeling and what's going on in their world. It creates a, a themed month around that connection at a, at a much deeper, deeper level. For example, one of, one of my core beliefs is that I actually think possibility is all around us, that, that in today's world, the opportunities that exist are far greater than they've ever been and that the, the barriers to entry are far lower than they've ever been. We simply need to have the tools, the tactics, and the strategies to make that happen. So when I approach everything, I ask the question, what if it were possible? What if it were possible? Just like bringing back that childlike kind of spirit, you know, when you ask a child, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? They don't give you one thing. They give you a list of things. They want to be astronauts. They want to be doctors. They want to be firemen. They want to be that, that spirit of excitement, that, that spirit of possibility. And that really is one of the core elements that drives me in everything I do. When someone brings a problem to me or one, when I hear someone say, it's impossible, well, then I start asking the question, what if it were possible? Because if we look at everything we have today, at one point in the past, someone said it was impossible, yet it's possible today. We've got self-driving cars, we've got cars that are starting to fly, we've got all kinds of things that at one point, someone said it was impossible. And so for me, that's one of my core beliefs in the way I approach life, approach business, and I approach working with my clients. And the cool thing around that is that it allows my audience to connect with me at a deeper level. They, they truly understand, one, what I stand for. And the audience themselves, whether they have that belief of everything's possible and, and just need the, the tools, the tactics, the strategies to make it come to fruition, or they actually have the desire 
to believe further, the desire to say, God, how do we make it possible? And they want that open, freer thinking, that possibility thinking in their life. Either way, they connect with me at that level and it allows us to have the conversation. It allows us to have the dialogue so we can nurture that spirit of possibility, that spirit of growth, that entrepreneurial spirit or that thoughtpreneur spirit at a level that all of a sudden what they might have thought was impossible now becomes possible in their own eyes. So if you want to create a content plan that actually works, remember, first off, you got to realize and make sure that you avoid the things that get in the way, things like lack of consistency and those kinds of things we talked about. Two, that you create an efficient process that allows you to create content at will, that allows you to create content that uh, isn't, isn't a burden, but allows you to do it in a way that is joyful and easy. And the last one, which is, which is what I think is actually the most important, is always, always create content with purpose. What's the reason that we're creating the content? Because if we don't create content with purpose, then it is a lot of work for no results because we didn't intentionally design the results up front. So create content with purpose, which is why we created the con content creation multiplier. It's gonna allow you to take one topic area and answer six questions, which actually gives you six different content creation pieces from one topic and makes it easy and easy to implement. All right, so click the link around this video, download it now, and let's get the content created. And I'll see you next week in the next video. Cheers. Hey there, Mel Abraham from, let's do that again, I can't even get my <laughs> name out. Case of the Mondays. <laughs> oh my God.